and welcome back to Way of the Wrench. Everybody knows that if you yank the power on a Raspberry Pi, there's a really good chance that you're going to corrupt your SD card and have to start all over from scratch. So on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to safely turn on or turn off a Raspberry Pi simply with the touch of a button. And uh, that works great in this case because we have a Raspberry Pi W uh, that powers up our digital marquee. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. Now normally with the Raspberry Pi, you're going to want to safely initiate that shutdown script to happen and when you're running your Retro Pi, it's super easy. You just enter your, your menu, go all the way down to quit. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes, and it initiates your safe shutdown. But when you have a headless Pi, such as our digital marquee, that means there's no way to communicate with it that's easy. Um, you have to hook up a keyboard up to it, you have to hook up through SSH with PuTTY and a separate computer. And um, I didn't want to have any of that for this cabinet. I just wanted a simple way to turn it on and off safely without corrupting the drive. And it comes in handy whenever your Pi decides to just freeze up, glitch, and um, you can't turn it off. And the only thing you can do is hard plug it. So uh, I installed a button on the back of this cabinet. I'll show you that in a second to initiate that on and off sequence. And um, I went ahead and did the same programming and everything that I'm going to show you for the, the Raspberry Pi W that I did for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that's running RetroPie. That way if it ever glitches and I need it to safely shut down, I can simply touch a button and get that to work. Okay, so real quickly before we continue with this video, I thought I would share something with you guys. Um, I was kind of fed up with how I was filming my videos in my garage and the lighting was absolutely horrible. So I, I broke down and I ended up buying a set of linkable motion sensing lights, LED lights for the shop uh, made by Coda. And um, I was completely blown away uh, by the ability and what these things could do. Uh, to give you an idea, I've got the system on right now. It's tunable. I can go right down to low level. Lowest it'll go. I can go up in scaled increments. It's motion sensing. I walk in the room, it turns on. I walk out 15 seconds later, I can program it to turn it off. And um, just to give you an idea of how crappy the light was, this is completely off in my garage filming with the big light that I've got. So uh, you can see like such a huge improvement. So um, I wanted to thank these guys. So I literally just reached out on Instagram and said, hey, dude, uh, these are really awesome lights. They really made my day. And um, what a great outstanding company. They, they actually sent me some samples for some shop lights. And I said, hey, maybe you can use these for your uh, new videos and um, let us know what you think. No charge. What, what an outstanding company. And um, honestly, they make a great product and um, wasn't all that expensive. It was like $40 a light and they're linkable. So you can put as many lights as you want, one after another, and uh, they make a huge difference. Um, by the way, I'm not getting paid for this. I just uh, really like it when I buy a product that works as intended and um, it's not breaking the bank. So seriously, it's pretty cool. So I thought I'd open this up with you guys and um, see what's in it. Kind of exciting. It's like the first thing that's free for the channel. So that's pretty cool. Uh, whether you want to call it a review or a sample, ah, pretty cool. snazzy. Look at these big guys. I right, get some batteries in this one. and uh, I'm going to put them in the video and I get a perfect spot for this which is why I'm opening this. Uh, I want to show the inside of the cabinet. It's kind of hard to see in there so these are going to work actually pretty awesome. Thanks Coda. Oh that's slick rubber o-ring around here so these things should be waterproof too. Slick, slick, slick. Fully articulating, adjustable. What's this? Nice spring loaded clamp. And I guess this is the on button. Looks like a high and a low. Nice, very cool. Well, there's even three magnets in the back, rare earth magnets, so you could stick that to a big metal plate or a metal car. Yeah, cars. Ooh, this would be awesome. Stick it underneath the trunk lid, hood, see what you're doing. It's gonna be cool. Let's go try these bad boys out. So the back end of this Raspberry Pi, here's my momentary on-off button that is in a previous video I showed installing that. So when you push this button, 
it connects these two wires in the back. It's a momentary on switch. So normally it's off, you need a momentary on switch or button. And um, so that connects these wires and those wires go up to my Raspberry Pi zero uh, W. And you can see that these wires turn into smaller wires and go into pins five and six on that GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. And um, once you do the coding that I'm gonna show you next, that initiates it to turn on or off depending what state it's already in. Look at all that light, it's pretty awesome. All right, so this is my Raspberry Pi Zero W and um, we want to make it so that it has a power off button so that when you press the button, it automatically commands the Pi to shut down and then five, 10 seconds later, we can hard shut it off on the arcade cabinet switch on the outside. So. Today's video is basically just showing you how to do some soldering and we're going to solder in this header strip. So these are the things you're going to need for this. You're going to need something to solder to. So in this case we're using the Raspberry Pi, whatever you're soldering to it, in this case the header strip, some safety glasses, some goggles, face shield, something to prevent liquid hot metal from splashing up into your eyes. It's highly unlikely it happens, but if it ever does, man, it's going to hurt. Uh, and for a lifetime, right? You're going to need a soldering gun of some sorts. This is like the pencil type. Uh, it's not too much, they're about $20, $25 from an electronics store. Uh, you got options, you can buy these solid tipped ones that hold the heat a lot longer, which are kind of nice once it's all warmed up and ready to go. Or if you're one of those impatient types, you can get the hollow points. They heat up a lot faster, but they're just a little more brittle and tend to break uh, easier. So I got the solid tip ones. And um, if you're gonna go ahead and buy one, you should probably get one that has a controllable temperature on it, just so that you can be a little more accurate with your soldering. All right, you're gonna to need to yourself some solder. Now, I would splurge a little bit and make sure you get some nice electronics grade solder. Um, don't just get like plumbing solder or something like that. Uh, that way you don't have to deal with fluxes and that kind of stuff. This stuff is nice to use and it flows really easy. And another purchase, which is really quite cool, is a desoldering tool. I like to call this a solder sucker. And uh, these are only about 15, 20 bucks. And um, they come in handy when you make a mistake and you solder something in the wrong spot. So all you have to do is you go like this to load it and then you heat up the solder at the spot that you want to take off and then when you're ready you push this button with this nice and close and that sound is the sound of the plunger going back up making a vacuum and sucking off that liquid solder and then next time you plunger it down it just kicks the solder out so very valuable tool it's only about 20 bucks another thing you're going to use is a wet paper towel or a wet serviette something so that you can clean the tip of your soldering iron as you're using it because it'll start to oxidize and give you grief all right, so I'm plugging in my soldering iron. I've got a temperature control on this one, and I like to set mine to 375. So on mine, there's a little plastic dot there. I'm gonna set it to 375. Now, also on mine, there is a little red LED lighting. That's to tell you it's plugged in, and it's also telling you that it's turning on and getting the tip hot. When this LED light goes out, then you know that your soldering tip is ready to start. And um, this one will take you a couple minutes. Beginner tool tip. This tip is gonna get crazy hot. So when you're doing your soldering, watch where you're putting it, especially in between soldering. So is it sitting on your wooden table, burning the crap out of your kitchen table and your wife's gonna kill you? Or are you putting it on a laptop, melting through your keyboard, that kind of stuff. So watch out for this and um, obviously don't touch it with your finger. If you do touch the tip of your finger with this, you'll get a pretty bad burn and um, get to the cold water right away as soon as you can. And the longer you leave it in the cold water, the less burn you get. All right, so in my case, I wanna figure out what side I wanna put the female header strip in. And since I've got this nice little Raspberry Pi case, I want to be able to mount this to uh, the inside of the arcade cabinet. So I don't want to put it on this side. Uh, it's got a nice opening on the top side, so I'm going to put them in on this side. So I'll take it out of the case. Here is my header strip where I'm going to actually put that. Uh, I only need actually pins five and six, but I mean, I've got all this. Um, figured I'm going to solder all of them in and uh, show you guys how to do it. And I'll probably even let my daughter do some of the soldering here too. So that's just going to fit in like this. And those pins. Gonna poke out through the bottom side. All right, safety glasses on at this point. Like I said, you don't want molten metal flicking up into your eye. It happens, so make sure you got these on. My LED light has gone out, so my tip of my soldering iron is now 375 degrees Celsius, so we are ready to go here. Now, I'm gonna show you this once. You don't want to solder with the tip of your soldering iron dirty. What you're going to do is you're gonna take your wet paper towel, you're going to wipe it, and you'll know it's hot because it'll make a nice little sound and make some steam and get the tip nice and clean. Now, the next trick is you have to take some solder 
and you have to tin it. And all that basically means is getting the tip with some solder on it so it doesn't oxidize right away. And so you can transfer the heat nice and fast. Now if you notice all the fumes, you probably should be doing this somewhere where it's well ventilated. So open a window, open a door. Make sure the piece that you're going to be soldering in is exactly how you want it because once that solder cools down and hardens, it's kind of set and uh, it's more work to get it off. All right, so if you're talking too much, you're going to notice that your solder starts to go nasty on it. And um, once again, I'm going to show you the first time how to do it and then I'm just going to rapidly show you the rest. So the key to soldering is that you get the heat from the soldering tip touching the contact of the circuit board and the pin or the wire you're trying to solder. It has to touch both at the same time so heat goes to both. Now when you melt the solder, the solder turns into a liquid and through capillary action it always melts and runs towards the heat. So, like I said, if you don't have both hot, it will only run to the one contact and it'll be trying, no, it'll be hard to stick to the other. So whenever you're doing circuit board kind of stuff, put it to one side on the contact, touching the wire or the pin, and then the solder goes on the opposite side. And that way, when it gets hot enough, it will suck the solder through the joint towards the gun and get a full solder. So, like this. Right, that's actually pretty crappy solder joint. I've got too much on it. It's really kind of hard to get these little contacts that are on these pie boards. Um, but the main thing you're looking for is the solder. Does it look like a little volcano all the way around the contact, all the way around the wire? And does it look shiny? If the solder looks shiny, then you've got a good joint. If it, it looks dull and gray looking, that's what they call as a cold solder. Uh, it's not connected properly. You're adding resistance to the circuit and it may not work. So if it's gone gray, you're going to have to melt it and use a desoldering tool and get it off and retry. Now that we're all done, uh, because these are such tiny little spots and it was really actually quite difficult to get at these, it's, um, I'm going to go through and make sure that there's no connections between any of them. There might have been a little like spillover from another um, contact and I can't have that. Now that I've got this female header strip, it's time to work on the code so that when the button is pressed, um, this thing shuts down for us. So let's go do that.
All right, that's gonna be a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to make an easy on-off button to turn off your headless Pi, or in this case, your digital marquee Raspberry Pi Zero W like I used in my cabinet. Uh, if you liked the video and enjoyed the content, uh, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. And if you're able to use this for your Raspberry Pi, then um, I'd appreciate a like and a sub. And uh, I'm really appreciating all the love and the subs that I'm getting. They're just rolling in like crazy. Uh, in fact, I've got a new goal for myself of breaking a thousand subscribers before Christmas. So anything you do to help me share on a social media would be over the moon uh, appreciative. So uh, if you'd like to follow us in behind the scenes, uh, you can follow us on Way of the Wrench at Instagram. And uh, next video up, and getting very close to the end of the playlist for this arcade cabinet is going to be the end breakdown, all the parts cost, what things cost, and um, things that I've learned over the last year, uh, my successes and failures and my experience I would love to be able to share with you guys, and um, some future modifications that I might do to this thing and um, change it a bit. So, until uh, next time, take it easy.